We're going to be talking about fresh faith today, and I thank you, Rick, for doing that. I love that little bumper there. That's called a bumper, by the way, before the sermon, and you'll probably see some more of those. Kind of gets us ready to think about what it is we're going to be talking about, what are we going to be learning about, but most importantly, what we're going to be applying to our lives. You know, when we hear a message from God's Word um, and we don't apply it to our life, it reminds me of a house um, that I remember as a kid. I used to walk past this house and it was really, really run down. It was just plain wood and the house, the paint, the white paint was chipping off the house. So it was partly white and it was partly gray. And then one day I came by and I saw a bunch of paint cans on that house or, or in, on the front porch and they were stacked all up. And so I thought, okay, I guess they'll be painting that house. And then after a while, um, even the paper on the paint can started to just peel off and fall off. And the house stayed unpainted, and that was that. They bought the paint. They had what they needed, but they didn't apply it. And so when we're looking at God's Word, um, I want to remind all of us. This is me, too. And any time, by the way, that I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me. Um, there's no difference in us. Uh, we, I just, God's called me to be up here right now, but he's called all of us to be priests for him. And so this is about all of us growing and having a fresh faith. And uh, we're going to be uh, reading in Psalm 96, uh, one today. And in this series, my prayer is that you'll leave closer to the Lord because your faith is refreshed. Now, maybe, maybe this is a phrase you haven't heard of before, fresh faith. I had never heard of it before either. It's something I, I thought of a few years ago, and I started a, a message series on it and never got to uh, finish it. And so this was years ago, and I said, you know, I'm going to revisit that because I really feel like it's a great opportunity. Anytime you have, a, we call it in radio, we call it a pattern breaker in our life or even at church. Jim was a phenomenal uh, pastor, and he loves people. And Renee, what an amazing uh, woman, an amazing pastor's wife, and what a tremendous administrative assistant. And of course, Josh, you know, everybody loves Josh. And so, um, and, and I really miss him today. But, but, you know, Jim spent a lot of time being sure that God's word was preached at Anchor, and he did that. And thank the Lord for that. Um, there was a rumor going around, this is kind of funny, um, that because I was going to be preaching, there would be less of God's word. Yeah, that's not true. So, <laughs> Next week, I'll give you four reasons why our faith needs to be refreshed. And then finally, after that, I'll give you four reasons, maybe the following week, four ways that we can refresh our faith instead of walking around feeling spiritually stale. Now, I'm sure that none of you have ever felt spiritually stale, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, and all the, all the self-righteous people are going, not at all. Never felt that way. I always feel very fresh in my faith. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not the way it works. How do I know that? When you go to Hebrews chapter 11, it's called the, the Hall of Fame of Faith. One of my favorite things about the Hall of Fame of Faith is that the people in it that God says, when you want to think about faith and what it means to have faith and to walk in faith, you can look at Hebrews chapter 11. Go to this chapter and you can see what it means to walk in faith. And all the people he used, guess what? They blew it. At some point in their walk with the Lord, they absolutely, they just blew it. And they had to come to a point where they realized that their faith needed to be refreshed renewed. When I was growing up, um, a lot of times you would hear the pastor say this. We don't really do it much anymore, but pastor might say, if you never accepted Christ, I want you to come forward and accept Christ today. And of course, we'll do that at the end of the service. But they would also say, maybe you would like to recommit your life to Christ. That was a phrase we used to use. It means that at some point our faith has gotten stale and we're feeling spiritually stale, but really None of us really, unless we have it now, I'm very blessed with amazing family and amazingly close friends that I've had. Literally, some of my friends, uh, my, my kids joke because I'm the only guy they know that's had the same friends for 45 years. Because when I find a good one, I hang on to them. Kind of like when I find, found Shelly. You know, so I married her quickly, as quickly as I could. Amen. 
It's a tough house. But sometimes we feel spiritually stale. Let's talk about faith real quick. If we're going to talk about refreshing our faith, we need to talk about what faith is out of the gate. I would love to assume that we all know what faith is, but guess what? If I were to hand out a piece of paper and take all your Bibles away and your phones away and say, write down what you think faith is, um, we would get probably a lot of different answers. Somebody asked me last week, what's your opinion about this thing? It was a cultural issue going on. And I said, this was my response, doesn't matter what I think. And they said, we're kind of puzzled. They said, what do you mean it doesn't matter what you think? I said, it only matters what God says. And that's a fact. When we live our life, when our faith is in God and what God says, then we'll be okay. But if our faith is in, if it moves around like the culture does or like our emotions can move around, one day we feel strong for the Lord. I, I love the picture we get of um, Elijah. You remember that, don't you, Mac? He's up on the mountain. He's got all the prophets of Baal standing around, and they're making fun of God. And Elijah says, well, I'm going to teach you guys a lesson. And within just a few minutes, 800 false prophets are killed. Not by Elijah, by God. But guess what? Guess what? Within 24 hours, and some of you will know the answer to this, within 24 hours of that incredible victory where Elijah called down fire out of heaven and destroyed 800 false prophets. Within 24 hours, guess where Elijah was? Where was he at, Mac? He was hiding, he was hiding in a cave. And he was crying because he was afraid of a woman named Jezebel. In 24 hours, now listen, Sometimes my faith is stronger than it is at other times, but I've never, I've never been able to call down fire on my enemies, and that's good. Because I, I, I'm sure I'd go to jail for that, because I'd use it all the time, especially on Market Street. <laughs> Out of the way. So let's talk about what faith is. I, the reason I told you about Elijah is because I want you to understand that if you find yourself with a faith that is weak, that feels small, if you feel like your faith is stale, here's what I can assure you of. It's not the Lord. It's not the Lord. He hasn't left you. He hasn't said, you know, I've got better things to do. How do I know that's true? Because of Matthew 28, Jesus said, to every believer... Because the Great Commission is to every believer, and in the Great Commission at the end of it, after he gives us the greatest command of all for mankind to go out and reach the world with the gospel, he says these words because he knows us. He knows we get weak, and we get weary, and we get tired. We get tired of change. We get tired of all these things in life. You know, life does happen. And Jesus says at the very end of Matthew 28 there, in 19 through 20, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And because that's true, even when we realize that our faith is getting stale, and I don't know about you, but I mean, I can realize that when it happens. Don't think that you can't be in ministry and it happened to you. Again, look at Elijah. You're in great company. I'm in great company. When we find our faith getting stale, we're in great company. Because when you go to Hebrews 11, to the hall of fame of faith, and all the people mentioned there, when you're strong in your faith, you're in great company. And guess what? It's the same group. You could have called just as much. You could have called Hebrews 11 the hall of fame of failing in faith. But God, see God, he always sees the glass half full. That's mainly because he can make the glass and the water in it. And so when God looks at the Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews 11, because he wrote it, he knew those people's faults and failures and, and frailties before he called them to do anything. Now, why would I want to start out the very first message of the next eight months in this chapter in, in Anchor's life talking about faith? Because 
It's the giftedness, and you've heard this before, and you will hear this for the next eight months. It's the giftedness, the spiritual giftedness of the people of God on this campus that will determine how far or how little we reach the world. It's your giftedness. It's not based on one guy. It's based on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God in you. And all we do is give you platforms as a ministry team, as council, as deacons, as ministry team leaders who I'll be meeting with this week. All we do is give you a platform to use your giftedness. And all that comes and happens at the moment we place our faith in Christ. But there are two kinds of faith. I don't want to muddy these waters at all. And if you have any questions after the message today, please come and ask me. But I'm going to try to be crystal clear on this. There is believing faith. There is that moment when I was eight years old, when I had heard the gospel since I was six days old in that church on South College Road. And I had heard the gospel because my mom and dad made sure that I was in church and I was hearing God's word. We had multiple different pastors. We went through pastors. We went through congregations. But I heard the word. I heard it every week. I heard it Sunday morning. I heard it Sunday night. I heard it Wednesday night. I heard it every week. Do you think I wanted to be there all the time? No. No. I remember Lost in Space used to come on on Sunday morning. <laughs> I have never in all my life seen the end of Lost in Space. I don't know what happens to them. I just know I loved that show, but I never got to see the end of it because... It would go off about, t about 9, and about 8.30, we had to roll. And it was an hour-long show, so I got to see half of it. Guess what? It benefited me greatly to hear God's word. Because on that day when I heard his word, when I was eight and a half years old, that fall, whenever it was, whatever the day it was, I don't remember the, the, the date, but it was a Sunday morning, and God's word had been going into my ear. Remember, Romans says, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what we want to do is not get my opinions or your opinions or my thoughts or your thoughts out into the world. We want to get the word of God out into the world. And God, guess what? God uses us to do that by faith. That's how important faith is. And so on that morning, I went to church and I'd been talking to my mom, saying, what does it mean to be saved? I had even talked to an elderly uh, pastor that had uh, visited our church the Wednesday before. And he was kind of a, a hero in our denomination, an older guy, a great man. And I talked to him, but I really don't remember what they, what they told me. But I do remember that the morning that I stepped out of that pew, out into that Hall, walkway on the left, I actually didn't go to the pastor, believe it or not. I went to the altar. And my prayer was one name. That was my whole prayer. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I needed a Savior. And God's Holy Spirit had convicted me of that. And that word convicted means convinced. He had convinced me of that. And because he convinced me of that, here's what I did. I walked forward and I went down. And one of the reasons why I like my piano over on this side of the platform is because when I got saved, when I was eight years old, it was right back on steps that were behind the piano. And so anywhere I've ever been on staff at a church, I always love for the piano to be on this side because as I'm walking up here, and you guys can always know this from now on, it just reminds me of when I walked up that aisle and I got on my knees and I didn't have a special prayer. I didn't have a tract with me. But I was convicted I was a sinner and Jesus was the Savior and I had one prayer and it was just a name. Anybody guess what that name was? Jesus. It's all I could get out. It was all I could get out. But he saved me. And that is believing faith. But then, guess what? An amazing thing happened. God didn't kill me right after he saved me. I, it's hard to believe. I've deserved it many times. But what he did was, he said, I got things I want you to do. Now, it wasn't in words. I'm not telling you a beam of light came down. But it was believing faith that got me to accept Christ. But then, 
I call it, I call it walking faith. Walking faith. Because I believe in Christ, because he is my Savior now, I want to serve him. And I want to, as much as I humanly can, surrender to him. And so that is walking faith. That's the Monday. See, I got saved on Sunday with believing faith. I believed and I was saved. But now it's time to walk. You ever heard of walking by faith? For we walk by faith. That's not, a, that's not a, 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 a believing faith statement. That's a walking faith statement. That's the Monday morning statement. That's the Monday morning faith. And so now it's time to walk in faith. And that's why I wanted to talk about faith today because I want to be very, very relevant to you today. I want to be crystal clear. I don't think that all of you have it all together all the time. One of the scariest things for me is that you could actually think that I always have it all together all the time. Because I don't. I'm just a man. I'm just a person like you. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. And I have faith. But we all have struggles. But it's that faith, that walking faith, that can get stale. And when that happens sometimes as quote-unquote, and I'll use this phrase very broadly, as church people, we don't want anyone to know. Well, I'm struggling right now, and I don't want anyone to know. I'm going to just keep this on the down low. That's all that matters. Whatever you're struggling with, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But we want to keep it on the down low. You know why folks don't come to the altar anymore? In a lot of churches, some churches they do. I'll tell you why, because I know. Because we don't want anybody to think there's anything wrong with us. What if that happened? What if? What if I went up and prayed at that altar? Now, you can pray anywhere. You certainly can. I promise you, God will hear you at this altar. God will hear you at a stoplight. I know because I've talked to him from both places. But I will say this. God tells us in Galatians, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves. He's talking about believers. Don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together, as is the custom of some. It's different when you and I bring something to this altar because it becomes something different than a wooden stage covered with carpet. It becomes a place where we're okay with other folks knowing I need the Lord. I need the Lord's help. Something is weighing me down and I have faith but I'm struggling. Or maybe you know someone who needs faith. Someone who's lost, going to hell. They need faith. Or maybe you know another believer who is struggling. They don't even live here. I spoke to one of our members. I call her a member, uh, Pat uh, Becker. And we had a great conversation this week. And I got to pray with her on the phone. And it was awesome. And I was, I was walking around in the sanctuary while I was talking with her. And we were talking about Isaiah and Fred and her and how much we love them. And I told her, I said, you know, Pat, we're, we're, we're all praying for you. I said, And she told me about her wonderful church family she has up uh, near Raleigh now where she's at. And I said, that is incredible. It's actually past Raleigh. It's about three hours away. And she said, Kevin, this church is so amazing. And she said, it reminds me of my family at Anchor. And I said, you know, we're just the same family in two different houses. That's all it is. But that's what faith does. And faith can get stale. We can get tired. If it wasn't true, then we would know for sure that God would not have told us, do not grow weary in well-doing, right? I've learned that any time in the Bible where God tells us to not do something, it's because he knows it's something we're probably doing. And any times he tells us to do something, it's probably because it's something we should be doing and we're not doing it yet. If you look at all the letters from Paul, what were they? They were letters of correction. Think about it. The theology in those letters is amazing. But they're all correction. You guys are heading down this road. 
your faith is heading this way and that's not good, here's where you need to be. And so fresh faith is important. Let's look at um, Hebrews 11, 1 real quick. I'm just going to read this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we'll probably, we'll probably close with this. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you ask folks just in the world, what is faith? The answer you'll probably get, and understandably so, because it makes sense. Well, faith is believing what I can't see. I mean, that's fine. I understand that. But faith, there's more to faith. How do we know? Because there's two words in Hebrews 11.1 1, that are really, really cool words. Substance and evidence. Think about that. Think about that. If you were to go into court and you were trying to win a case and you said, Judge, I want you to have faith that I'm telling you the truth and that I should win this case. And he says, okay, let me see some substance. Let me see some evidence. And you say, well, I don't have any of that. I just want you to believe it. Well, you're not asking him to have faith. You're asking him to be stupid. God is not asking us to be ignorant. God is not asking us to blindly trust him. The Bible says in Romans 1 that what may be known of God, that the attributes of God, the very attributes of God may be seen in his creation. Romans chapter 1. That is where faith begins. As a little child, you look around, you see a mama and you see a daddy. You see the ocean, you see the mountains, you see the sky, you see the stars and the moon. You see trees, you feel the wind. And you begin to understand and think to yourself, this might not be an accident. Somebody must have created this. That is the beginning of faith. But faith is not blind. And God doesn't want us to be blind. He says it is the evidence of things Hoped for. It's the substance of things not seen. Substance is something I can actually experience. Evidence is something that proves something, doesn't it? And we walk outside. I'll tell you this. I've been through many hurricanes. I know Mac has. As a matter of fact, we're still trying to get Mac to quit running in storms and cartwheeling because he likes to do that. But when you're in those storms... The most deadly part of them, you can't see. I've never seen a hurricane. Now, if you ask me that on Monday or through Saturday, I'll probably say, sure, I've seen many hurricanes. No, I've lived through every hurricane I've been through so far, but I've never seen one. You know why? Because it's wind. You can't see it. You can see what the wind blows around. You can see the evidence of the wind, but you can't see it, but you know it's there. When I'm praying to the Lord, I can't see him. There is no beam of light. But guess what I can see? That tells me that things like evolution, that things like evolution aren't real, that things like creation are real, that it's the way God said it happened in Genesis 1 because I can look at my children when they were born. I was there for all three of my children to be born. I remember the first time I saw their face. I remember the first time I saw each of their eyes their little eyes looking at me. Literally, the second they were born. I remember seeing my grandchildren for the first time. There's no way, and this is where faith comes in, there's no way that those little faces and those little eyes came from a random explosion of rock from nothing. And when my little grandson Lincoln comes up and gives me a hug like he did this morning. Nothing like it. That's not random. That's created. That's created from a loving God. Faith has evidence. There is a substance to faith. And next week when we talk about faith, we're going to be talking about how important it is for us to refresh our faith. And what that means is, that we don't think that everything we knew about the Lord 
when we were saved, like me at eight and a half years old, that we don't ever think that everything that I understood about him then is all there is to know about him. And so we'll talk about that next week. Right now I'm going to pray, and we're going to dismiss in just a second. The way we're going to do this is one of the things that I've always found difficult is when you have one song for an invitation, um, I was one of the second verse people. That was, I was a second verse guy. Yeah. Just as I am in waiting not, but I was waiting. But I didn't finish that verse. I came on up. But here's what I'd like to do. And the team and I have talked about this all week long. I want to extend the invitation. So it won't be limited to one song. What's going to happen is I'm going to pray. Kaylee's going to uh, come up here and close. And then when we do that, I'm going to be right over here. For as long as you need, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, I'll be right over here waiting for you. And you can call on him just like I did to be saved for all of eternity. Maybe there's something else going on in your life. Maybe you're a believer, but you're struggling with something. A family member is struggling with something, a, a person at your job, whatever it is. I've asked Matt to come up, and he's going to be over on this side. And if you just need prayer about anything, Matt will be right up here in front of this altar, and I'll be right up there in front of the altar over there. And we'll be here for as long as you need after you're dismissed today. If you need us for an hour, for two hours, We'll be here. The invitation is open. Do you need Christ? You can leave through those doors today forgiven of every sin for your whole life. You have a prayer need? Mac will be up here in just a minute. Father, we thank you that you've given us the gift of faith. Father, we thank you that you could have just told us we had to be good enough and then watched us all fail miserably, but you didn't. You called us to be saved by faith through grace. So, Father, we ask now that you be glorified in the response of our family here at Anchor and the response of anyone who needs Christ. And, Father, we ask that you would make this altar a place where people walk up one way and they leave changed. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.